this is the afternoon meeting of the House Appropriations Committee on March the 12th. And we are joined uh, for this portion of the meeting by uh, Representative Bill Lippert, the chair of the Health Care Committee. Um, and at the suggestion of Representative Iacovoni, um, we invited Representative Lippert to come in and help us understand a proposal um, that was referenced in the committee letter and is going to be part of, of a bill that we will be seeing. I, I believe yes. I'm stating that correctly. And um, Representative Iacovoni was concerned about doing uh, justice to uh, this proposal. And we thought rather than having a translator in the form of Rep Iacovoni that we would invite Rep Lippert in. And with that, um, Representative Lippert, let us turn this over to you for um, our edification. Great, I'll try to be clear. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, because our committee is very much in the final stages of completion of House Bill 210, which is a bill to address health disparities in the state of Vermont and to work toward health equity. Uh, in, our, in our letter to the committee, we put in a proposed $100,000 to support uh, the work uh, that we're going that I'm going to describe and with several people I've I've indicated and I in the press of everything that's happening I want to at the outset say that we are we are going to be recommending $180,000 appropriation for this work the, the $100,000 was required we needed to put it in our our letter a few weeks ago and uh, subsequent to that we are we, we're strongly requesting a revision of that number to $180,000. But let me tell you what it's for and why. We have, uh, we have many, uh, many important issues in front of us in terms of health disparities and health inequities in the state of Vermont. Uh, but th th those are the challenges. The good news is we, we know where many of those health disparities are focused and that the work, the, the bill 210, uh, builds on the work of the Department of Health, who has done work in addressing health inequities uh, and is completely in alignment with the Department of Health's own analysis of health inequities in the state of Vermont. And these health inequities focus on three particular areas, issues of race and ethnicity, issues of the LGBTQ community, and issues of people with disabilities in Vermont. In the initial bill, H210 proposed the immediate establishment of an Office of Health Equity within the Department of Health. But we recognize that the Department of Health, we have deep, deep appreciation. They are doing COVID. They've been doing COVID 24 seven, Monday, seven days a week. Uh, and they are not in the position, despite their strong support and interest for health equity issues, they are, it, is, it, is, it is not realistic and not a fair uh, suggestion to ask the Department of Health to add this to their plate at this time. But we also are fortunate that we have established in Vermont in the past several years, an Office of Racial Equity. And Susanna Davis has staffed that office and has been asked to do so many more things than is possible for one one human being, no matter how talented and uh, energetic. So let me start by saying that our committee strongly supports the addition of the two permanent positions to the Office of Racial Equity. And we see that, and I believe that that's in the governor's budget, although I'm not sure the funding is ongoing, but that we feel like the establishment of those two positions is a prerequisite, is a necessary prerequisite to what we're asking for in our bill H210. What we've, what we've in the course of testimony, uh, in the course of testimony, we came to understand that one of the key components for finding health equity and ending health disparities is to engage the affected communities. And to give the affected communities, in this case, the communities of race and ethnicity, the community, the LGBT community and the disability community, 
to give their voices and their ability to help shape the solution rather than for us to impose a solution. This bill, H210, was brought to us help, helping to be crafted by members of the affected community. Uh, the Racial Justice Alliance had a, a major role, a significant role or primary role in crafting this bill. And in it, they create a commission, not just the Office of Health Equity, but a commission for health equity. And the commission is made up of members of state government, but also membership of the affected communities, again, me membership from the race and ethnic communities, the LGBT communities, and the disability communities. Now, this commission is not your traditional commission. It has 27 members. And I know that people are going to roll their eyes and go, 27 members. Um, we fully anticipate that. Uh, but that you need to understand that what we're talking about here is empowering and empaneling a group of, of Vermonters affected by health disparities over many, many years and giving them the voice to help shape not only the direction of creating this Office of Health Equity, but also advising, the, uh, advising us, the legislature, on some of the solutions around medical education that should be a part of the solution as well. In order to achieve this without impossibly asking the Department of Health to take this on, we have turned to the Director of Race Equity, Susanna Davis, and we worked with her collaboratively. In fact, I've just, she just was in our committee in the last hour. And she indicates a willingness and an interest in taking on this additional temporary transitional responsibility. And again, I emphasize this is a new added responsibility, it would be a new added responsibility to her office, but it is a temporary and transitional responsibility, not the addition of a, of a third permanent position. So what we're proposing is that we appropriate, we the legislature appropriate to her office for this transitional role, $180,000 that would be funding it with the equivalent of a, a senior position along with the fund, fund, you know, um, salary and benefits so that we're not trying to do it on the cheap, uh, recognizing that it takes, that, that she, would, she would be able to hire a person or persons or consultants on a temporary basis under her direction to help stand up the commission, to facilitate the commission's work in advising about how to best proceed with an Office of Health Equity, to work with the commission to determine how best to have medical providers in Vermont have the type of appropriate continuing medical education around cultural competency, and to use them to, to, to engage these members of the affected community, not just in a full commission meeting, but in subgroups we anticipate that there would be subgroups used to, to create this work and move this work forward. There, of course, we in a previous letter to your committee, you have already approved some funding for data issues. Data issues are very important around health inequities in Vermont. If we don't collect the data, we can't analyze the data. But if we collect the data inconsistently, we still can't analyze the data. So there is a data, there's a data piece that is previously funded in, your, in the previous bill and which involves both the Green Mountain Care Board, the Department of Health, and now would also involve the Director of Race Equity in her new role, her temporary transitional role of standing up this Commission of Health Equity. So the proposal is $180,000 to fund the temporary transitional assistance to the Director of Race Equity along the lines of $140,000 for consultants, $20,000 for bringing in perhaps expert, expert voices to the commission and some administrative expenses, and $20,000 to uh, include uh, whatever per diem was necessary over a period of time, both in the full commission and in the, small, in the work groups. Okay. Okay. That's the proposal. And we're very excited about it, uh, to be honest. I mean, let me be very clear. We think this is, this is an exciting opportunity 
uh, for us to move forward the issues of health equity in the state of Vermont and to address health disparities. And we're, what we're doing really is be the beginning of creating an infrastructure to effectively do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Lippert. That was um, a very helpful high level overview. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see if there are any questions. Of course, we will see the budget. When yes, we see, absolutely. I mean, the, the bill when we see the bill. Yeah. Um, but th so thank you. Representative Harrison. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you, Chair Lippert, for the uh, overview. Um, I'm just looking on your committee's uh, website, and I pulled up draft uh, uh, 3.1, I think it is, that I assume is the draft that you're working on. It's under today's... Uh, uh, today's well, there's a new draft that's probably not posted yet. We, we've been drafting okay. all day, and, and we, have, we still have work left this afternoon. Uh, okay. We have not yet voted okay. the bill. But I can tell yep. you in anticipation, we'll have strong support from our committee. Okay. But that um, draft will give you know. a general idea. Yes. Yeah. Representative um, Harrison, that would, that would give you a broad general idea. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm going back to the appropriation that you um, sort of summarized. Um, and I, I see where it talks about 180,000. And as you explained, this would be to set up uh, you know, some of this work and work with the, uh, the new commission that's uh, being anticipated here. Right. Um, I'm curious as to what you, okay, so we do that for next year because it's one-time money, um, but what's the plan for, you know, fiscal year 23 as you envision it at this point? Yeah, I'm, thank you, because there's, there's a piece I didn't mention. One of the exciting things about establishing an Office of Health Equity in Vermont is that it provides us the opportunity to apply for grants and receive federal funding for health equity issues. And we anticipate that with the establishment of an Office of Health Equity, we will have new access to federal funds, which other states are already accessing in different ways. And having an Office of Health Equity will help us uh, to apply for. And one of the specific roles and powers and duties that's outlined in our bill is that this, uh, this office and this commission, at this point, this commission can both apply for and receive grants, both from, uh, in this case, from the federal government, from, I think there are also going to be philanthropic area, uh, philanthropic entities who will feel invested in this work. Uh, so, so in part to say, uh, I think there, there, there needs to be a plan for future uh, ongoing funding for an Office of Health Equity and for the commission to continue its work. But I think there are also, uh, there are also opportunities in front of us uh, once we establish this that go beyond just state funding. But at this point, we can't, you know, we, we, haven't, our, we haven't put before you a specific proposal, but we do know based on testimony that there, is, that there are opportunities uh, that we can tap into. And frankly, uh, the cost of health disparities to the state of Vermont is enormous. Uh, we, you know, when we know you're going to receive another bill from us, but when we know that uh, someone who's not able to get appropriate prenatal care and one, uh, one birth that requires extensive hospitalization because of difficulties uh, from failure to have prenatal care, can cost our healthcare system enormous dollars as opposed to getting prenatal care to all mothers who need access to it. So we think, uh, of course, everyone's gonna tell you we're gonna save you money in the long run, but we, we genuinely do believe that. But I think in part, there's also federal dollars that we believe we'll be able to access. Okay, um, thank you. That's helpful uh, and hopefully optimistic that we might be able to get help going down the road, but. Um, let's just assume we know what we know today and that um, the plan is to establish a, um, a new office within the health department. Um, that's ongoing funding. And um, I guess um, there's a reluctance to make too many commitments for ongoing funding without knowing where that money's coming from. 
Yeah, I appreciate that. One of the other pieces to this, and this is a complex puzzle, but one of the other pieces to this, uh, Representative Harrison, is, what, is that the Department of Health is already investing uh, in health equity. And one of the issues that we believe needs to be looked at as well is how to align the work of staff in the Department of Health who are already highly, excuse me, highly invested in working around health equity issues uh, to integrate with what would become the Office of Health Equity. So I think the idea that a full office, uh, it, it, it probably would require some additional funding, whether it's from the state or from federal funds, but I think it also requires the creative realignment of some ongoing funding that's already in place in the Department of Health. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Representative Shai. Um, thank you, and thanks for all the work, Representative Lippert, that you and your um, Health care committee have been doing on this. It seems really important. I guess my, my question to you is what are the specific outcomes that you uh, expect to achieve as a result of this? You know, what, what's going to be different? Um, what's going to be better? Well, like, in the near, yeah. Well, in the near term, uh, in the near term, one of the things that first we need to, before we can make decisions on how best to address health disparities, we need to fully understand what they are. And so I think the funding around data collection and data alignment is an initial very important piece. Over time, we expect that uh, addressing health inequities will result in fewer disparities, uh, fewer disparities for the affected communities, communities of color, the LGBTQ community, and the disabilities community. The testimony in front of our committee is and, and I'm sorry that I really, you know, every committee wishes you could have heard it all, but uh, it, it's very compelling testimony when we hear about the inability or the fear, the, the, the ongoing fear for many, for, for example, last few days ago, we heard from members of the Abenaki community and from other indigenous members of the Vermont indigenous community in addition, in addition to the Abenaki, because there are other indigenous Vermonters right. in addition. And what we hear is the ongoing impact of the eugenics, frankly, horror stories, uh, the fear of being identified, the fear of going, the fear of approaching medical professionals. And so we think that uh, we, we're trying to address this in a number of ways, but uh, our goal, our goal is over time to be able to do outreach to affected communities so they actually secure the health care they deserve and therefore reduce the dis not just the disparities, but the impact on that community so that the health they get is actually in the interest of all of us as Vermonters. Yeah. So improved health care, improved health for, for all of these populations. Absolutely. And it's really but, one of the long-term goals that you're it is. It's, it's a short-term and a long-term goal. And I would say it's important for us to recognize that this is improved health for entire, this is, there's nothing that if COVID hasn't shown us anything, if the most important thing that COVID has done for us, as tragic as it is, it has shined a light on two things. One, the incredible disparity in healthcare for affected communities, particularly around race and other, other disabilities but it has also shined the light on the fact that until we all are healthy, until we all have health care, until we all are vaccinated, until we all feel free to seek health care, we're not all healthy. It's actually in the interest of everyone in the state of Vermont to have healthy Vermonters in every part of the state. And that includes around issues of race, issues of LGBTQ status, issues of disability. And we are learning that in this COVID emergency. And I think this is a compelling moment in time for us to take steps. And this, this frankly, I think is a very modest, very modest request. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. So thank you, Representative Lippert. I'm not seeing any additional questions and we know that you have work that you need to go. So we don't want to detain you any longer. Um, as you know, Representative Iacovoni is our key, our link with you. And we will certainly obviously read with interest your bill when it comes to us. 
but um, also we'll do our questioning through through him. Absolutely, so, I welcome and, that. Yeah. Uh, and let me let me just say again uh, how much I appreciate working with uh, Representative Yacovoni on this and other issues, and we look forward to uh, continuing a strong alliance around health and health care for Vermonters. Okay, thank with, you. With thank your you. whole committee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and we do also with yours. Yeah. Okay. So thank you thank very you. much. Okay. Okay, and Nolan, Jen, and thank you for joining us. And I think you probably ought to follow Rep Lippert back to his committee. So thanks for being here. Um, Kimberly? Yeah. May I ask an unrelated question of Jen or Nolan? Oh, they already jumped. No, Nolan is still here. Um, getting a text about S-117 just passed the Senate that maybe they should be better offline. This is important for everyone though. This is another bill coming that extends the deadline uh, for a year of oh. uh, uh, the expiration of rules. Will that, is that in your um, committee already, Representative Lippert? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's, 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 we've been working jointly with the Senate Health and Welfare Committee on this bill. Part of the yeah. bill has actually been crafted in our committee and we've, we've sent it to their committee. We agreed that it would come in one bill. It's a priority bill that must be passed uh, I've spoken with the speaker. It will be at the top of the agenda for next week. Our committee has not received the bill, of course, yet, but we will review it early next week. We've been in close contact with Senator Lyons and her committee, and uh, I think we're prepared to move it because it needs. there are a lot of March 31st deadlines that need to be uh, anticipated, and so we've been working since the first week of the session to move this bill uh, through the House. For, through this. We work jointly. We each took a part of it. We then are putting it in the Senate bill. It's now become a committee bill 117. It's coming to the House and we will be moving that bill uh, the first part of next week, I believe. Okay. Excellent, thank you so much. So I'm now confused. Is that related to health disparities? No, it's an entirely <laughs> different bill. It's only related, it's, it's, it's the extending of the COVID emergency provisions uh, that we did okay. actually a year ago today. Bill, Does everybody remember? That was a year ago today. We talked we, about that um, yeah. this, this morning and yeah. we're remembering what it was like on this day a year ago and yeah. how hard you worked. And we crafted emergency legislation, which we've extended. And now we've looked at it carefully and said, these are the pieces that should be extended further. And that's what that's what S-117 does in part. It also address, addresses some also additional issues of telehealth. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, looks like we may have another question. I don't know. Uh, Representative Harrison. Yeah, thank you. Um, Representative Lippert, um, we certainly appreciate all the work your committee did uh, a year ago. I remember waiting on the House floor all day long uh, as a bill that I was a primary sponsor of was in your committee and being reported by your committee only to find out we were, you were waiting because it was being hijacked for all those emergency measures on the uh, first responder training. Uh, yes. Okay. And ultimately some other things are done, but thank you for your support on that bill last year. Right. I think, I think there's going to be some more things around emergency uh, EMTs and wellness and that you're going to hear from the Senate and via us eventually as well. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank you.